Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and you are likely doing a lot of work from home these days and often need a webcam to do it. And if you're trying to figure out some ways to make yourself look better with a higher quality camera, you might have noticed that it's hard to get a hold of a good webcam these days, but you might have a bunch of cameras sitting around that could actually work as webcams. And there's a great way now to hook them up to your computer very inexpensively. There's a whole bunch of these super cheap capture cards that have shown up on Amazon over the last couple of months. And what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at three random ones that I purchased here and see how they perform bringing in some of these traditional cameras into our laptop here as a webcam. And this might be a good alternative, especially if you have things like a GoPro hanging around or even an old camcorder or something. You might be able to repurpose those older cameras as a pretty decent webcam device. And we're going to show you how to do that in this video. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I got all three of these capture boards from Amazon through their Vine program free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. All right, so let's take these things out of the box. And as I do so, just remember you always get what you pay for. There are much better capture devices out there that cost more, that have support and companies that stand behind them. Uh, for some reason, a bunch of these just got dumped on the market, and my guess is that there's a factory in China somewhere that got a good deal on some chips and is just cranking them out. So although these are coming in different packages with different pieces of documentation, there might be some subtle differences between them, but for the most part, uh, these things are pretty much the same uh, and should function about the same because I believe the inside of them is pretty much identical from one device to the other. There are some differences here as to what these uh, are looking like here as I take them out of the box, but again, they're all uh, coming with the same specifications and I think should perform uh, pretty much the same. Now, the uh, devices here will capture 1080p up to 30 frames per second, uh, but you can hook up a 4K camera. It's just going to uh, down convert the video to 1080. And I believe it also supports lower resolutions as well. And a little later in the video, we'll experiment with some lower resolutions and see if we can get a 720p 60 signal to work on these. Uh, Epos Vox, who's a great streaming tutorial channel, uh, did a profile of these for people doing production and game streaming. And he did find that there was a lot of flexibility in what you can do with these devices. But today we're gonna to be mostly focused on webcam use and we'll do a little bit of capture uh, in this video as well when we get uh, towards the end. So let me uh, get started here. We'll just pick the first one here, plug it in, and I'm plugging it into my gaming laptop here, which is running Zoom. And this would be the same if you were plugging it into a desktop computer or another laptop. Uh, we're running Windows right now, but we'll check out Chrome OS in a little bit. And what's happening right now as we plug this thing in is that the system is recognizing it. It says setting up a device, and it looks like it was able to get it going. And what I'm going to do now is connect up this camera. This is a Nikon DSLR. Uh, this is an older one called the D600, but it actually outputs a really nice HDMI signal. Now, if you have one of these cameras, your mileage will vary because every one of these cameras does something a little different when it comes to its HDMI video output. Some will uh, have HDMI out, but they won't give you a full frame. Uh, others will give you some image, but it'll have stuff on the screen. Uh, so what you want to look for is a camera that can do a clean HDMI output. And it's hard to find the specifications on that for most cameras, so you may have to ask around or poke around in the settings. Uh, what I found is that uh, the mid-range of the Nikons and Canons tend to do that because a lot of video creators are using these as studio cameras. Uh, the Canon camcorders, even the really low-cost ones, uh, all support clean output through their HDMI. In fact, most camcorders do. So we're going to switch over to Zoom. And what I'm going to do here is go into my settings and go to video. Now, what it's going to default to more than likely will be the a camera that you have on your laptop. And I have an option now for USB video here. So let's select that and let's see what we get. Look at that. We've got the Nikon camera here on screen. And look at that. We can get a nice uh, bokeh. I've got a 50 millimeter lens on it. 
Um, so let me zoom in on my messy desk here and you can get a feel for what that looks like. And if you're curious what one of these nicer SLRs would look like on your webcam, here you go. This is coming in from my Nikon camera through one of these low cost adapters into my production software. It looks pretty nice. The focus might be a little soft just because these SLRs are really difficult uh, to get right on the focus. Uh, but if you do have everything set up and you put your chair in the right spot, it should look really, really nice. And this is what people on Zoom would see if you were plugged in with one of these cameras. Now, the good news is all three of these devices functioned identically when we plugged them into the computer here and attached up cameras. And as expected, when I looked at the hardware ID of each, they're all the same. So inside, they have the exact same guts. Now, I was curious if we could connect more than one and use them independently. And so what I've got now is one plugged into the back of my computer and another one here plugged in on the side. I've got my camcorder hooked up and right now we're looking at my Nikon SLR in Zoom. And if I go to my camera list here and select the Canon camcorder, you can see, there it goes, uh, that that one is working independently and they're both accessible to me here. So if you have a conferencing software that allows for multiple cameras and the ability to switch between them, uh, this should work here with multiple devices. Just be warned though that sometimes your laptop or your desktop computer might put the USB ports on the same hub or the same connection and sometimes that might lead to trouble. So on this laptop, when I plugged in the adapter to one of the USB ports, the color was a little off and when I moved it to a different port, it worked fine. So this is another area where your mileage may vary a bit but the good news here is that it looks as though uh, you can use multiple adapters with a single computer and have more than one camera attached simultaneously. Now, one cool thing about using an external camera like this with your computer through one of these adapters is that it doesn't just transmit video, it can do audio as well. And if you plug in a nice external microphone to your camcorder, you can feed both video and audio into the adapter here and get a much better experience. Uh, so right now we're back on our Zoom settings and depending on the software you're using, you'll have to go in and find the microphone section on there. But as you can see here, the uh, digital audio interface, the USB digital adapter that we have installed is showing up as a microphone. And if I just go here and test the mic, I can maybe tap on it a little bit here and talk a little bit. I'll stop recording and tap on it a little bit here and talk a little bit. And you can hear that it's picking up that microphone and playing it back for me. So I could use this camera as my mic or have a microphone connected to this camera be the mic and you'll get better audio in addition to better video. And it's often best to use a microphone attached to your camera because that will keep the lip sync working properly. Depending on your computer, if you're bringing your mic in through a USB microphone and having video come over the camera, sometimes the audio and video may get a little out of sync. But if your audio is coming over with the video uh, through the single cable to the adapter, you'll have a much better presentation. Now, you're not just limited to cameras. You can hook up other HDMI devices as well. So I've got my iPad connected up right now. And as you can see, it is being brought into Zoom. And the latency is very minimal on this too. I was very pleased with that. Uh, so if you wanted to have yourself on one camera with an adapter, you can plug in a second adapter and connect your iPad, for example, and bring both of those into your Zoom conference. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that the image is reversed. Uh, you can change this in the settings. What it does is it gives you a mirror image for your own video. So if I was on a call, uh, somebody would see the image in the proper orientation here. Uh, Zoom also has some options to do two cameras at the same time. So if you go to the share video option and go over to advanced, uh, you'll see there's an option to add in content from a second camera. And there are ways you could actually have both your iPad and yourself up at the same time. Uh, so pretty much most HDMI sources should work with this. Uh, the one exception would be maybe a Blu-ray player which has copy protection on board. The movie studios don't want you broadcasting their movies out to the world. So that might be one thing that doesn't work but it looks like an iPad and other devices here uh, should work without too much trouble. On the iPad, you will just need to get an adapter to get an HDMI output. Uh, so I have a newer iPad Pro that uses a USB-C adapter, 
but other iPads will use the Lightning to HDMI adapter to get the output there, and it's possible to also hook up computers and Raspberry Pis and other things that output HDMI through one of these adapters. All right, so let's try out the Mac now. We've got my little 12-inch MacBook, which unfortunately is no longer being manufactured. Now, you'll note here that uh, this is a larger USB-A connector, but the MacBook has a single USB Type-C port. The good news is that with an adapter, all of these older USB-style devices will work with the newer USB-C format. Uh, one of these actually came with an adapter, but you can find these very easily. Uh, any USB-C hub should also uh, be able to work as well. And we're just going to pop it in here to the side. We've got the Canon camcorder here already attached. I'm just going to load up QuickTime, and this will find a webcam just like it would uh, in other applications as well. So we'll just go to new movie recording here. And as you can see, it already came up. How about that? So it is working just fine here on the Mac. Let's try out the Chromebook now and see if we have any results with that. All right, so we've got the Chromebook out now on the desk. This is the Pixel Book Go that in full disclosure was sent to us by Google uh, last year for a review, a nice little Chromebook here. And what I've got, just like the Mac, is that adapter in place here to get the capture card connected because this only has USB Type-C ports. And right now we're in Google Meet. I have my video options set up here. As you can see, it's grabbing video from the webcam. Uh, but it looks as though USB is also an option here. And if I just move this uh, thing out of the way here, you can see that this is working with Google Meet as well. So it looks like this is working uh, not only on Windows, but on the Mac and on Chromebooks, and it should work also with other devices that support webcams because the standard that these capture devices are using is basically the webcam standard. So if something works with a webcam, it should work here, and it's encouraging to see that it's working on at least three different platforms, and I know it also works on Linux as well for supported applications. So now we're going to take a look at some more technical items because I know a lot of you will have some techie questions that you'll want answered in this video. And what I'm doing right now is running my analog Mega SG at 720p at 60 frames per second into vMix. And it seems to be working just fine at that frame rate. It looks like we're getting the 60p here. Uh, so I think you should be able to run it at 60 at lower resolutions. Remember, at 1080p, the max it will do is 30 frames per second. If I pull up the chart here to look at performance, it looks as though we're getting uh, a couple of resynced frames here as we go along, along with a few drop frames. Uh, this is something that Epos Vox noticed in his video as well. It's not going to be something that'll be all that noticeable on a stream, perhaps, but this is something that I often see on these lower cost devices. So when you drop a frame, it means it wasn't able to keep up. And then when it resyncs, it's often going a little faster than the frame rate that vMix here is requiring. So these are not perfect devices. They are not for professional use. But if you're in a pinch and you need to bring something in, uh, they do seem to work pretty well at that. And they will drop a few frames here or there. But if you're just doing it on a live stream, not that many folks are really going to notice that. And it looks as though I'm getting a nice smooth uh, 60 frames per second here through vMix at 720p. And we also plug them into OBS, and I've got the game console here running along with the Canon video camera. All seems to be working pretty well, and you can move things around and do all the usual things you do with OBS too. Now, one of the reasons why I like using these analog consoles is that it's very easy to switch around video modes. Uh, so as you can see here, we're at 720p 60. I can switch it back to 1080p 60. Uh, this, of course, will not give you 1080p 60 out the HDMI, though. You're only going to get 30 frames per second, so things won't look as smooth. It's going to have to drop frames to meet that frame rate. Uh, but it also seems to work at 480p. If I switch down to that mode, boom, it just comes right back up again. So it looks like it's got uh, some degree of scaling built in as well. And again, if you are at these lower resolutions, you should get the 60 frames per second output. Again, 1080p, though, is limited to 30. So that's going to do it for this look at these low-cost HDMI adapters. Again, the packaging is different. The look of the devices is different. But the guts inside are the same, it looks like, on most of these. And I was really impressed, as many other reviewers have been, as to how good these are for the price. It's almost too good to be true based on what I've paid for these kinds of devices in the past. One thing to note, though, is that this is not for professional broadcasters. 
given that we're going to see some frame drops and resyncs and that sort of thing. But for streamers and for people doing Zoom meetings and whatnot, not bad at all. Again, the max output on these is 1080p at 30 frames per second. So if you are capturing game footage, you'll probably want something that can do 60 frames per second at 1080p. But these might be great for a secondary camera like the one that's on you as you're talking over your game stream. And they're also good for more than just cameras because as you saw, you can connect iPads and other HDMI devices up to them. Uh, just buy at your own risk just because all of these sellers might be gone tomorrow. So maybe buy two or three of them from different sellers just to be safe. But overall, I think I am comfortable actually, surprisingly, uh, recommending these as a low cost, super budget video capture solution. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.